Hi, my name is Marius and I'm gonna show you today how to implement your own decision mechanism for, uh, within the Rossimo simulation framework. Um, okay, for this let me basically go over to Visual Studio here. So as you can see we already have opened the simulation in here and within the core project basically there's all the decision mechanisms or at least um, yeah, the adapters. So if we want to implement a new one, let's say for the pot storage decision, um, we just have a short look at, for example, the random pot storage manager, which you can see here. Um, this is within control, defaults, and pot storage. So this is where all of the more simple ones are stored. And um, we want to now create a new one. So we create a new class and call it, let's say, test pod storage manager. And just to keep it shorter, I will simply copy over the random mechanism over here. Of course, I need this name just to keep it a bit shorter. And of course, we want to have a com. Um, uh, of course, I need all of these references and usings. Then we can already see. Okay, we need a configuration for that one, of course. Um, so if we want to set some parameters, then this would be helpful. So this is basically distinguishing the different controllers. And for pod storage, we find them in the method configurations ps. So again, here we create a, a new class. I again use the random one as a draft and rename this to test pod storage configuration and as we can see here there's a type for this this is useful different levels but I will basically add a new type a uh, new one to this enumeration too um, so we have a new pod storage method type called test and this has a configuration in here. We of course need to set this to test then. And then we have some abbreviation for that one. Let's call it TE. And uh, here we have some settings. For example, whether it prefers the same tier if the instance has multiple tiers. So it doesn't do complete random across all storage locations, but only across the ones located at the same tier. Okay, so we go back to our main class. Um, this should now be test. Let's also shut out here. So we need to use the configuration here. And then, of course, we're missing a using it. So, okay, this looks good. So we have our new class. Um, basically, this method decides the storage location to use for the pot each time it is called. We'll just select a random one from un all unused pot storage locations and um, yeah, basically give that back. And here's other things that we could do and also other things that we could override. Um, this is not really important at this point. So let's keep it a bit shorter. Um, we also need to add all the references at every other location of course because we now have a new type so when initializing the simulation and the controllers especially we need to consider the new mechanism so basically we put in test here and then the pot storage manager is the new test pot storage manager pass the instance to it That should already get it started. And then for serialization, we need to reference, oh, that was the wrong one. So we have our new test pod storage configuration. And uh, this one needs to be known to the serializer. So I'm we'll just add it below here. So XML include, including the type of our new configuration so that it is known to serialization too. And let's see, I 
think that was more or less it. Oh, I need to close this one before I can compile again, of course. Okay, restarting the simulation or the visualization. We should already be able to see, if I didn't forget anything, um, that we have a new pod storage mechanism available. So this is where the different mechanisms can be set, um, the different decision mechanisms that are implemented. We can see here that the nearest pod storage uh, configuration is loaded, but we want to use our new test pod storage configuration. And as you can see, you already have all of the parameters in there. It's basically the random pod storage configuration, as you can see, but uh, with a new name. And it also will load the right controller in the background because it has the right enum type in there, hopefully. Um, we leave all the rest to its default settings, generate a new instance, and now the controller is loaded already. And as we start, basically our new decision mechanism is already working. So now we could change the code and uh, make it, yeah, basically do whatever we want there and decide however we want um, within the, the controller. I think that is all for now. Um, this is more or less how fast you can implement your new decision mechanism. Of course, you can also load your project or basically another project uh, in that controller and reference that from there so that you can have more complicated logic. You could uh, load a model-based approach or whatever. Um, this is basically, as you could just saw, a simple function that randomly assigns a pod storage location to the pod. So, but basically within here you could pass the decision to every other control logic that you implemented in the background and so, yes, then you already have set up your own controller. You could also combine different ones um, and basically just implement these as adapters that then send the, the decision to another more complicated logic in the background. Um, this could also all work. Okay, well, thank you very much and have fun. See you.